and there we go that was me looking at things on the new version of Wirecast which we now have what are you laughing at? Five, four, no <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry went to the same school as I did yes yeah. apparently so <laughs> Okay, <laughs> perhaps perhaps I should um, introduce my partners in crime tonight. I, sh I shall do that. Um, in in the far monitor, I'm going to go gentleman first, if you don't mind, because it's, he's further away. In in the far monitor, in the wilds and woolies of Brizzle, where the men are men and the sheep are fleet of foot, we have the beard, the one and only hair standing on end man, swath man himself. It's Andy Sutton who's with us tonight. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. How's uh, how's the weather doing down there now that Typhoid Mary or whatever it was called is blown through? <laughs> um, she's still blowing a is little she? bit. Yeah, a little bit wet and windy here, but um, I made it home. Good. So you'd be singing, I made it through the red. Never mind. We'll just... Other songs are available. Other songs are available. We'll not uh, we'll not go there. In in the middle monitor, in the middle monitor is is the one and only. I mean, it couldn't be anybody else. It is the effervescent loveliness, the bountilicious babe who has a new to her, though slightly pre loved Darwin in her hand. It is the one and only Sav. How are you doing, Sav? I'm absolutely fine now. I'm back in the land of Darwin. Have you have you have you been without yours? Has it gone for repairings? It hasn't because I, mine got sick, so I borrowed cats. But then I thought, oh, cats may get sick, so I can't send mine away because then I have no Darwins at all. Now I've got a third Darwin. I may consider sending one of the two sick Darwins away and work it in stages. I see. I see. Always good to have a spare. Yeah. And a spare spare. Yeah. Yep. Apparently yep. now. In the third monitor, the one closest to me tonight, slightly earlier on, was our very special guest for the evening, Rebecca Taylor. And she, at the moment, is um, doing what ladies do in order to become presentable, whatever that happens to be. It happens behind closed doors, so I'm not privy to it. And she'll be having a bite to eat. But the minute she's ready, she'll let me know. We'll bring her in, and then it'll be all... What's the word I'm looking for? All hands on deck, all... It'll be all good. That's what it'll be. Suppose we really ought to play the titles, ought we not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and, uh, and tell everybody that this is VT Talk. <laughs> Yes, indeed. It's Wednesday night. It's VT Talk. I'm Dave Dawn. We've got Andy Sutton and Sav with us tonight and Re Rebecca Taylor to be joining us later. And it is likely to be a very, very, very packed show. Without any further ado, let's drop straight into it, because we can, with a piece from the Labour Party. The party of the people giving them all cancer. Um, it says here, from Labour Press... Cameron promised tough action on smoking, but has completely caved in to big tobacco and vested interests. This is how to take a story and spin it out of all recognition. Luciana Berger, MP, Shadow Minister for Public Health, commenting on new figures showing the first falls in five years in the number of people successfully quitting smoking and trying to quit smoking with NHS help, said... These figures confirm that this Tory-led government have completely lost their way on public health. Actually, she's got that right. It should be completely lost its way on public health because government is singular. The fact that fewer people are successfully quitting or trying to quit smoking with NHS help for the first time in five years should set alarm bells ringing. Certainly should. 
David Cameron promised tough action on smoking, but he's completely caved into big tobacco and vested interests. Standardised cigarette packaging is proven to make smoking less attractive to young people, but ministers have gone back on their pledge to introduce it. With around 570 children starting smoking in the UK every day, we need action now. That's why Labour will be bringing forward an amendment to the Children and Families Bill next month to introduce standardised packaging. Ministers should do the right thing and support that change. Now that, there you see, that is a Labour MP taking some facts and then completely making a mess of what they're doing. That's spinning the story into something else. I'm going to ask Andy Sutton, Andy, why do you think there's been a dramatic decline in the numbers of people using the NHS to either quit or make a quit attempt? Well, uh, that, that, that article completely ignores um, e-cigs and it also that clearly demonstrates that um, people don't go to their doctors to quit, <laughs> basically. I, I think you're probably not far from, not far from being wrong there. Um, I would imagine chat's probably a little bit up in arms, but we'll, we'll go there in a second. I'm, I'm just watching your face for that moment when you're going to pounce. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm completely ignoring the fact that e-cigs exist, completely ignoring the fact that in Italy they've seen a 6.8% downturn in their tobacco tax revenues. In America they've seen an 8% downturn in their tobacco tax revenues. In the UK, HMRCE will not publish what the tobacco tax revenues are, I think because they're embarrassed. Now we'll go to chat. Because I can see the intense concentration. Sav? <laughs> I just got my favourite comment so far, but I'll save that till the end. Okay. <laughs> uh, Formigo says, it's stunning how someone can interpret figures completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Whip it up 69 says, proven by whom? To which FMRL has said, proven by because I said so. Midge Dog said, sigh. <laughs> Bean Zero has said, that's the good thing about statistics. You can make them say whatever you want. M Piggy has said, I sometimes think Labour MPs don't live in the real world. Either that or they will say anything to get elected. And my favourite comment so far came from FR FMRL who said, NHS spokes Muppets say there's a decline due to them not getting enough funding from the government. I love that word, spokes Muppets. Spokes Muppets. That's, that's a brilliant <laughs> word. <laughs> VT Talk tonight is brought to you by the word Spokes Muppets. Spokes Muppets. <laughs> That's... I love our chat, do you not? <laughs> oh, brilliant. I think they're brilliant. That's a brilliant. Brilliant. Spokes Muppets. I'm having that one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too late. FMRL's just copyrighted it in the chat. Ah, that, well, it was written oh. down. Yes, it was written down, so um, unfortunately he does have a copyright on it. Well done, Femmo. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, We've seen what Labour politicians have done in Europe and how they've made a complete and utter dog's dinner of the whole thing. Um, and this, this whole notion of ignoring e-cigs and blaming it on legislation that they're actually waiting for real documented and quantitative as well as qualitative proof on. Um, any, any more to add to that, Andy? Because we've got such a lot to go through tonight. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, the last paragraph, the uh, with with five hundred and seventy children started smoking in the in the UK every day. Um, I, again, you know, it's just, it's just, as you said, it's just spin. It's just uh, they've dragged the children argument into it again, and uh, I'm sure you've got other stuff coming up that we can talk about that a little bit more as well. I think you are very, very probably right, Sav. I know you can wanted to come in? in. Yes. One last comment uh, came from Gillis and Gillis says, well, it looks like they're as good at losing 1.5 million vapors as they are at losing illegal immigrants. Again, bang on. Can't argue yeah. that in any way, shape or form. Not in any way, shape or form. But you, Andy, with that, that bit that you said about 570 kids starting smoking, every, was it every day, every week, every month? What is it? Every day. Really? We need action now. Do we? Mm. You see, there's, there's more news that says we really don't. Health Day, news for healthier living. It says e-cigarettes may not be a gateway to smoking. This is from a study. It found few teens go on to smoke cigarettes, use other kinds of tobacco after vaping. This was yesterday, Tuesday, October 29th. 
e-cigarettes don't appear to entice teens to try smoking tobacco, a new study says. The researchers noted that doesn't mean that e-cigarettes are risk-free, but it should reassure parents that teens who try the devices may simply be doing so for the novelty and aren't necessarily setting themselves up for a lifetime of nicotine addiction. We've got more on that later as well. Last month, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warned that vaping or inhaling the nicotine vapors from e-cigarettes might be a dangerous new fad that could set teens up for smoking. In just one year, the number of kids in grades 6 through 12 who said they'd ever tried an e-cigarette more than doubled, rising from 3.3% to 6.8%. Among the 2.1% who said they were current e-cigarette users, more than three quarters said they also smoked regular cigarettes, and I'm willing to bet they'd started on them. Given that overlap, many health experts worried that e-cigarettes might be acting like a gateway drug, sucking kids more deeply into nicotine addiction, and law officials urged the US Food and Drug Administration to regulate e-cigarettes as tobacco products. The new study suggests that may not be the case. Researchers surveyed 1,300 college students about their tobacco and nicotine use. The average age of study participants was 19. We asked what the first tobacco product they ever tried was and what their current tobacco use looked like, said researcher Theodore Wagner, an assistant professor of general and community paediatrics at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City, here enough to refer to as TED. Overall, 43 students said their first nicotine product, this is out of 1300, 43 said their first nicotine product was an e-cigarette. Of that group, only one person said they went on to smoke regular cigarettes and the vast majority who started with e-cigarettes said they weren't currently using any nicotine or tobacco. It didn't seem as though it really proved to be a gateway to anything, said Ted, who presented his findings at a meeting of the American Association for Cancer Research in National Harbour, MD. Where's MD? Maryland. Maryland. Study findings presented at med medical conferences are considered preliminary since they haven't been carefully reviewed by outside experts for publication in a medical journal. E-cigarettes, which use a heating and blah, 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 it goes on all of that. Uh, a whole load more. But, says Ted, parents should be sure to let kids know that e-cigarettes still carry some risk. <laughs> so does crossing the road. I think parents should be vigilant and talk to their kids and let them know that this is not a 100% safe product. Now there's water. It's not water vapor. Water vapor is not 100% safe. It's nicotine. It has carcin. He spoiled it. It has carcinogens in it. He said it might be less than regular cigarettes, but at the end of the day, they're still putting something that has carcinogens and toxins into their system. Wagner said, and I'll come out of that because I was starting to lose. The will to live with that last little bit. So he was fine up until the last two. I suspect he doesn't want to lose his funding. Andy, you got anything on this? Oh, it's just the same old thing, isn't it, really? It's, you know, kids, kids today, you know, that they will, if they're smoking and they use an e-cig, I, 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 that's the lesser of two evils in my mind. They're all, you know, it, 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 we all agree that kids shouldn't use either, but they clearly are. And, and I thought tonight when I was thinking about, about this article, it's like saying that a kid, you know, fireworks, we're, we're approaching that time of year where we'll, we'll, we'll hear fireworks being set off in parks and stuff by kids who aren't old enough to buy them legally. Now, that's not saying that because you've illegally bought fireworks, you're going to go on to become a terrorist, is it? Or a car bomber, no. Or a car bomber, no. So, you, can, you know, it's, it's just kids being kids. And and that that article up until the end points out that you know that a, a lot a, a, is it the majority of them they don't one out of thirteen hundred oh, one out just, of thirteen hundred went on to actually smoke a tobacco or cigarette. It uh, that, boils my it annoys me a lot. It does it. Your uh, personal inhalation system solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it and kids are going to rebel, aren't they? And if they rebel to e-cigs, then lesser of two evils. That's well, got. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd much, much, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If my grandson 
young as he is, and he's been a little monkey to deal with the dogs, but if my grandson decides he wants to take up something on an AC like his granddad does, do I look as though I'm going to be worried? Because the answer here is patently no, I'm not. And, and we've got a little bit coming up that'll tell you why. But one of the things that's, that's coming out of all of these articles that does rather make me feel good is it would appear that the tide is turning in our direction because it's patently obvious that Ted Wagner, Theodore, um, is a prohibitionist or has come from the prohibitionist camp. It certainly seems that way. And yet he's done some research and he has discovered from that research that what the CDC put out was both mathematically incorrect and was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Frugal. Flawed. Flawed and frugal with the truth. Thank you for that word, flawed. So tonight's show is brought to you by, what's the word again, Sav? Spokes Muppets. Spokes Muppets and flawed. Two words that we're using tonight, and I know you've got something to say, Sav, because I can see it in your face. <laughs> oh, chat, I've had an awful lot to say on that. <laughs> I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> Joseph K said, the 570 kiddies is a Macavanism. Another new word, like it. Formigo said, Chris Snowden said it today, the amount of money spent on one quit smokers, um, quit smoking by the NHS, equals 200 E6 starter kits. Run that um, one by me again. The amount of money spent on one of the quit smoking kits by the NHS equals 200 E6 starter kits. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, you go to NHS Stoptober, what the hell ever it is they call these things. And the cost of what they give you, you get 200 starter kits from. I'm guessing the cost of sort of all the admin and the, you're paying the person to stand there and patronise you and all that <laughs> stuff costs the same as 200 E6 starter kits. This is what Chris Snowden was saying on Twitter today. Ye gods and little fishes. Sorry for interrupting. That is... That's disgusting. It's, it's a successful quit attempt, though, at the end of it. But it's still bloody expensive. Uh, all the juices just said, overall, it's £240 per person that successfully gives up. Wow. Yeah. No. Sorry, there was more. I interrupted you. I don't... There was, Formigo also said, I love nicotine addiction. I adore nicotine. Best thing since caffeine and sliced bread and salve. Ah, sorry. What can oh, I say? Okay. <laughs> and salve. And salve. Oh. What can I say? How many people have got a crush on you? Oh, what can I say? I'm just nice. You, you guys are horrible. Oh. You're not horrible. You're nice. Dave's oh, horrible. We, I've put the rows between the two thorns specifically tonight, and, and, and that's what you get. <laughs> what can I say? Bottom lip is quivering ever so slightly. Oh dear, what can I say? Well, yeah, and, and, and added to all of this, of course, is this whole notion uh, of addiction, which we're going to come on to after the adverts, but I've got a favour to ask you, those of you that are watching live. Hang what? on, before you go there, I've still got a couple more comments to go through. Oh, go for it, go for it. Yeah, uh, FMRL said, hmm, another bit of research that will be ignored. Bean has said, as E6 become more popular, it's only sensible that more kids are going to be looking at them. Fabigo again has said, one in 1,300. Wow, it's a massacre. <laughs> Matt, Matt Anderson says, I've converted a few of my young peers and none of them have ever gone back to smoking. Fabigo has also said, coffee and car has carcinogens, peanuts have it, apples have it, all sorts of them. If you want to start playing that game. Lamentel said, if E6... If E6 were a gateway into smoking, then surely most of us who have smoked tens of thousands of the things and have plenty of practice would be far more tempted to smoke cigarettes, but we're not. Far from it. Brutalness has made the point that we all know a kid will get hold of anything, no matter what people say. Yes. Gillis says, kids will experiment. Which would you prefer your kids experiment with? And Liam D. Vapor says, doesn't that show E6 are keeping them off cigarettes? Well, exactly. Exactly, and, and this is exactly my point. We know, I mean, it doesn't need any experts to tell us. We know those of us that are, if you like, fully switched, and those, you know, if, 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 if you're using e cigs, if you're a dual fueler and you're down from 20 to 5, you're as good as switched anyway. We know, we do know. In fact, we are the experts. That's why there should be nothing about us without us. Hashtag N A U W U. Now, woo. That's that. <laughs> Stop it. 
that's the hashtag anyway. Nothing about us without us. I mean, this is what we've got to keep on hammering home. We, we've been telling people this for the last I don't know how long. And finally, the studies are coming round and actually proving that what we've been saying is the truth, which I think is good. Um, yeah, I mean, Moonlet just said it perfectly in chat. What we all say, it's hardly rocket science. I used to smoke e, I used to smoke e cigs on ASA. Now I don't smoke normal cigarettes. I well, smoke e cigs. That, that, that's exactly it. I mean, I've I've said it a million times. I've, I, I still don't consider myself to be an ex smoker. I'm still a nicotine user. I'm just enjoying it more than I ever did. And it was getting shot of some rubbish today because we've been getting alterations done again. And I went to the door. To see the guys that were taking it all away with this in my hand. And uh, I got, what's that? I said, it's an AC. He says, I've got one, but it doesn't look anything like that. I says, what sort have you got? He says, bloody small one. Where can I get one of them? <laughs> kind of says it all, doesn't it, really? Um, I, need, I need to ask you a favour. I've got to, got to do this. Um, in chat, live in chat, if your MP that you have been to see, because you all have, haven't you? is supportive of our stance that e-cigs are not meds, can you please type their name into chat? Or if you know your MP is supportive or an MP that is supportive of our stance that e-cigs are not meds, can you please type those into chat? I'll tell you why. Um, Save e-cigs as a campaign is trying to collate a list. And of course, constituents have the information, you know because you've spoken to your MP. So could you please put their name in there so that they can pick those names up and collate a list of supportive MPs for fairly obvious reasons. We need to be talking to supportive MPs and getting the word carried around. And when Rebecca comes on, not yet, she's gonna give us a few hints and tips as how best to do that. So that'll all be good. Um, and this is a little piece of housekeeping as well. Can I remind everybody, please, that Children in Need is coming up and that there is a raffle. Now, you'll find a thread on UK Vapors. I will bring it up so you can see it. There it is. Uh, it's the Children in Need raffle ticket sales thread um, run by Mr. Gary Dibley. Uh, between now and the 25th of November, that'll be the final date for ticket sales. 12 midday, 25th of November, ticket sales closed. Your minimum donation is five quid for a ticket. 20 quid gets you seven tickets, mine are from 150 to 157. Uh, 50 quid for 20 tickets, and there'll be 100 and whatever it is to wherever it is after that as well. You know that there's a barrel load of prizes and what have you going on. You've seen the video, and I'm sure Gary will run through it again on Monday. It's all just given just to let you know when you make a donation, it goes direct to BBC Children in Need. Gary never touches a penny of it. It all goes, and you can see there the total as of, I can't remember what time it was I popped this up, but it was well before we started the show, is currently at £3,285.99 from 80 donations. Can we raise that? How many have we got in chats of? 152. Right, so the 70 odd of you, get yourselves over there after the show, please. Pledge a fiver. Why not? Let's see if we can make it bigger and better than it's ever been. And I'm sure we can. Um, thank you for doing it if you already have. Thank you for doing it in the future because I know you will. It's a great cause. Gary's a great bloke and I'd really like to see him get the five grand. I think that would, that would blow his little socks off and he would. I'm absolutely certain if he doesn't mod naked, he'll do the raffle naked if he gets the <laughs> 5,000. Will, will that make people go and pledge? Do you think? <laughs> Maybe the other way around the threat that yeah, he'll do it naked, naked if they don't yeah. pledge. Right, if you don't pledge, Gary will do it naked. <laughs> no, if you don't pledge, I'll do it naked. Oh God, I'm on my Quick pledge, now. pledge. <laughs> and if you were watching last night, you got a sneak preview. Let's go to the <laughs> adverts. We'll be back in two minutes. <laughs>
Weber and iWeber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. iWeber and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And we are back in the room here on, uh, it's the 30th of October, it's a Wednesday night, this is uh, VT Talk, and with me in, in the studio, well, kind of in the studio, in little monitors, he's very, very small, we have Andy Sutton on the far left-hand side of your screen, and the uh, Bountilicious Babe, the one and only Sav in the middle, who appears to be having some something of connection problems tonight. I am tonight, I don't know why. It's unusual for you, it's normally, although you have to get... Had to get a new router on Monday, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that I did, yes. Yeah, so that's probably why I'm having connection problems. Yes, so I'll not be putting a full screen quite as much as I usually do, just purely and simply because, you know, it should be... It'll look good tomorrow night, though, for the Halloween spe spectacular. It will. It will. Shall, yeah. we, uh, shall we blast on with where we were going? Yeah. And, and I'm going to go slightly out of order, because if you, if, if you remember, we were talking about teens and not being a gateway to smoking. Um, well, there's something else come up as well. Now, you might not know this, but in, in the antipodes uh, down under on the other side of the world, there's been um, kind of an anti-smoking conference going on, the Oceana uh, anti-smoking conference. It's the Oceana conference in Auckland, New Zealand. And, and there's some very, very interesting stuff has come out of that because they were talking about the addictive potential of nicotine. And here we have the headlines. Why is smoking addictive? It's probably not just nicotine, despite what we've been told for years. And again, this is from the Medical Daily. This is not just, you know, Tom, Dick or Harry sitting right. These are proper doctors that apparently are supposed to know what they're talking about. When we think about smoking's addictive qualities, the culprit that most often comes to mind is the infamous stimulant nicotine. The plethora of patches and chewing gums available on store shelves that are meant to dull the itch attest to how nicotine is the therapeutic target of choice. Those are big words that basically mean they've blamed nicotine all these years. Countering this dogma, though, are researchers in New Zealand who have further verified that nicotine is not the only ingredient in tobacco products that makes kicking a smoking habit an uphill battle. And I just want to quickly dodge back to this. Did you say the phrase they use a smoking habit, not a smoking addiction? Let's carry on. At this week's Smoke Free Oceana Conference in Auckland, New Zealand, Penelope Truman of the Institute of Environmental Science and Research presented a study that showed how rats exhibited a greater willingness to update, obtain a dose of smoke from non-nicotinic rolling tobacco compared with doses of nicotine and smoke from factory-made cigarettes that contain nicotine. Truman, along with researchers from Victoria University, gauged the extent that rats were willing to press a lever to obtain a dose of saline that was infused with either just nicotine or a type of tobacco smoke, because rats showed a significantly higher willingness to go the distance to get a taste of rolling tobacco smoke, the authors concluded that a substance other than nicotine must be getting them hooked. I'm not going to go through all of this again, um, but it could, in part, it says here, explain why nicotine replacement therapy and any other kind of products that deliver nicotine as a substitute to mitigate withdrawal and cravings might not be as effective as they could be. Bullen explained to the Herald. That's Chris Bullen. Um, and so on and so on and so on. It goes on quite a while. It's been linked to... Um, on the good old Twitter, and if you're not on Twitter, seriously, you ought to be there. There's Even Cat will tell you. And there's one you would never have expected it coming from. Even Cat will tell you. If you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. She's having conversations with people that she never thought she could get conversations with in, in real life, if you like. People like Simon Chapman and Martin McKee are engaging and having conversations. This is all on Twitter. Get on Twitter. It's there. Um... But what that's saying is that nicotine, in and of itself, is not particularly addictive. Andy? 
Well, it's very interesting, isn't it? It also demonstrates that the 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 I, I, you know it, rats are never going to be able to go into the corner shop and buy a packet of of, of cigarettes, though, are they? Um, they've got nowhere to put their change. Um, <laughs> uh, but it 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 draws me to the other part of what makes e-cigs so attractive to people, and that's flavour. So they're saying that rats were more attracted to the flavour of smoke than they were the nicotine. So, yes. you know, this whole flavour argument, uh, banning flavourings, is only going to make vaping, for many, less attractive. In, indeed so. Uh, good evening, Rebecca. Rebecca Taylor has just joined us, as Hi. you can see, over my shoulder. Uh, we're live to the world, Rebecca, at this point in time. Okay. I trust you've had I'm a good... My kitchen. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, we were just talking about this new study that's been done uh, in New Zealand saying that nicotine is not in and of itself particularly addictive. They've done this study with rats. That's interesting. Isn't it, though? Oh, is this the one that was on long-term use? Because I heard that there was some study going on in New... Oh, no, but that wasn't supposed to publish till next year. No, in case yeah, something else. that one yeah. published... No, this, this is one that's come out of the Oceana Smoke Free Conference that's... Um, being organised by the World Health Organisation, I believe, and certainly there's a lot of a lot of people there from that, um, and they're coming up with the notion that it's not the nicotine in cigarettes that make them particularly addictive, uh, which is an, an interesting thing, isn't it? Dave, yeah. can I just interrupt you and say you're on the wrong camera? You've Am still I? got Don Andy. Ah, I do apologise for that. There you go. Well, we're all we're sorted. Sorry about that. I, I was doing my my best Rebecca impersonation. Though. I was trying. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's no comparison. <laughs> no. None at all. Well, well yeah. So the, the study has basically concluded, Rebecca, that, that uh, yeah. nicotine is not the be-all and end-all when it comes to addiction. In cigarettes? Yeah. Okay. Or, Interesting. Or e-cigs, because we've also just featured another study uh, that had a cohort of 1,300 students who were asked about their yeah. tobacco use and nicotine use. And of, I think it was 48 that had initiated something of a habit with e-cigs, only, yeah. only one has gone on to smoke tobacco or cigarettes. Yeah, I, well, I mean, the, even the MHRA said to me that the gateways from, you know, e-cigarettes, tobacco, the gateway is one way. It's not a two way. It's from tobacco to e-cigarettes, not the other way around. Well, yes. I mean, this this is this is exactly what we've we've been saying Ash for a long. as well. That's what their study showed. It's, yeah. a, it's a, because I I can't understand why someone would start using an e-cig and move to tobacco. Why would you do that? Well, I don't know. I just I I can't because everyone knows how dangerous cigarettes are for your health. So if you, I, I just can't see why anyone would do that. It seems odd. Well, I mean, we, it, it's... Uh, it's just one person, so then it's just one very odd person, perhaps. Well, it would appear that it's, it's one in 1,300. Yeah. And, and when, you, when you consider that teenagers are teenagers, we, we all experimented with all sorts of things, and I'm not going to embarrass you by asking what you've... I did try smoking once or twice, but I never got into it. I just thought it was pointless, and that was it. I think that's that's probably the experience of the majority of teenagers, certainly these days, yeah. um, because yeah. I was quite sporty. Well, it doesn't really go with it. No, no, it doesn't. You're so right. Um, I'm quite thrown now. Yes. Do you want me to give you what chat's got whilst you're lining up your next thing? If you would, please. Yeah, Formigo has said, if nicotine was the addif addictive substance, NRT would be working 100%. Andy D said, someone should get the hard info on what the MAOIs that are added to the tobacco really are and what they do. Funny Trickster has said, I, don't th um, I do think there's more to it than nicotine, as I still felt cravings for cigs when I within the first week of switching. Uh, Cerulean C has said, I firmly believe it's far more than just the nicotine. Andy D says, there's a reason the MAOI acronym stands for More Addictive Other Ingredients. And again, Cerulean C says, it makes no yeah. sense, even from an experience point of view, the difference would be unpleasant. Mm. It's interesting because in the, in the, in the TPD, uh, I don't have it to hand, actually, because I'm in my kitchen, <laughs> not my office. Um, there, there was 
in there, if I recall, and I'm pretty sure it went through, um, you to ban anything that would make tobacco more addictive, to ban any substances that would be added purely to make tobacco more addictive, or, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's in. Article 6. Is it Article 6? It's Article 6. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I've got it memorised. Which, which makes sense. I mean, why would you allow people to do that? Well, yes, I mean, uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, are, uh, they're reasonably well known. And yeah. some of them do occur naturally in tobacco and as a result of the, uh, of the curing of tobacco. But I have suspected for a long while that extras of them have been added in order mm -hmm. to enhance the habit forming qualities. Because I've, I've been convinced for a long time that nicotine is not the problem. And I, I still consider that smoking and e-cig use, either of them, are more habitual than dependence forming or addictive uh, per se. Could be. So, well, certainly I'm kind of old school and, and looking at it from the point of view of heroin, um, mm. I have had friends who were heavy heroin users back in the 70s, one or two of whom are no longer around. Yeah, unfortunately but, that, that does happen. But they, they had a physical addiction. It altered their mm. body chemistry. Yes, definitely it does. And nicotine doesn't do that. It's irreparable, more or less, with heroin. Um, and yet, it's, it's interesting because I, I know many smokers who said when they've given up that they needed something to do with their hands. Absolutely. You know, they wanted something to fiddle with. They fiddle with pens or pencils or just something to fiddle with. Yes. Which obviously is not a physical addiction. It's just a. It's a sort of. It's not even an addiction, but it's just. Um, it's a habit. A habit, yeah, missing a habit, yeah. missing this, yeah, which is nothing yeah. to do with nicotine or tobacco. No, I mean, I used to work in an office and you'd get, you could only get a smoking break on your lunch. And I didn't miss cigarettes, but I always had it, I was playing with a pen or something, I always had something in my hand. Yeah. So it, that was all the time. But I didn't want to go out and have a cigarette all the time because it was like, I'm at work, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly it. And Andy, you'll have found the same. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's 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 part of your. It becomes part of your daily routine, and um, you know, it, it, I'll echo what everybody else has said. It's just uh, you're conditioned to doing something, and um, it, there's a, there's a lot more than just a chemical addiction than mm. than you know than anything else as well. It's, it's it goes hand in hand with it. I think. Well, I mean, you know, from from the point of view of a habit, they, they reckon that a habit takes a fortnight to break of not doing it. But I mean, there's, there's a guy lives up the road from me who habitually cycles every morning five miles. He cycles into work and he cycles home on a night. And even yeah. when he's not at work, he goes out for a five mile bike ride mm. because that's mm. his habit and he can't break it. But is he addicted? I don't think he is. But well, I mean, Moonlet is, yeah. Moonlet is just put in chat. When I first switched to e cigs even though I didn't want a cigarette, my hands almost demanded that I rolled my own cigarettes as I had done it for years. Absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 it's very, very much a habit. Very, very much a habit. Um, so well, your, your cycling neighbour perhaps would, it's not, it's not physically addictive, but you get endorphins from exercise, so perhaps he would miss the endorphins, but that's not an addiction. Well, I was going to say I miss endorphins from chocolate, but I can go f for minutes without any. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as this is why you keep coming to Belgium, David. <laughs> it, you, it's one of the reasons. One yeah. of the reasons. I've, I'm here to tell you that I think the lager is nicer than the chocolate, and the chocolate. Okay. And those little jelly cones—I'll call them cones, although that's not what we called them last time we were across there. <laughs> They're rather pleasant as well. Um, okay. And and yes, yeah. I could I could live in Belgium, but only for a fortnight. Yeah. I do have to yeah, say, I think you've never had tricks. to deal with the bureaucracy there, the local council bureaucracy. It'd, ch it'd put you off. I've got to be honest. Um, I, I don't think I could do your job. It would drive me up the wall, and I don't know how you've managed to stay so sane doing it. Um, <laughs> you, you might be making an over optimistic uh, assessment of me there. <laughs> well, I'll keep it over optimistic for the time being. So, have you had something to say yeah, before no, we. I knew what the country was like, at least in that respect. It wasn't a shock. <laughs> 
So have you were yeah, going to say? Uh, funny trickster, I think, has nailed it exactly for, for us. He says, with e cigs, you get the whole ritual of holding something, putting it in your mouth, inhaling and blowing something out and seeing the result. And do you know Absolutely. what? That, I am I'm firmly convinced that is the bit that the aunties don't like. Not the holding it, not the putting it in your mouth, not the sucking on it. I think it's the exhale that they don't like. That's the bit that really annoys them. It's certainly what annoys the likes of Stanton Glantz and Martin McKee because mm. they see what is an outward demonstration of people's ability to enjoy themselves. And that I'm, I'm, I'm almost convinced that's the bit that they don't like. If there was no visible va vapour, there wouldn't be a problem. Is it, yeah, is, I, is think, that... I think there, there are also some, some people kind of slightly obsessed with this, you know, renormalisation potential um because it the imagery could look like smoking i mean if you're using the kind of device that you use david it's pretty bloody obvious unless your eyesight is quite poor that it isn't a cigarette pretty much it doesn't look like a cigarette no but the the e-cigarette that's being advertised and most of the uk now is, is, is the it looks like a cigarette I've seen it in, the, in a, you know, in train station ads and things like that. I spent a lot of time in train stations, um, and I think what uh, certainly, I mean, I've had discussions with uh, with with Martin because we were at a conference together, not nothing to do with these things, um, uh, beginning of this month, and they are, you know, genuinely concerned that this could lead to a sort of renormalisation of smoking, because it looks similar, but I mean, there's no there's no evidence that this has, has yet happened. But it's that's I think more where they're coming from. It, now, I'm not totally convinced by those arguments. I, I'm, I'm um, not because I, I think that you know it, if someone is using, as I say, a device like like you're using, it's it's not a cigarette. It doesn't even look like a cigarette. Well, that's, as you said, it looks more like a sonic screwdriver. A very expensive one for at that. me what i dislike about smoking i don't want to breathe anyone's bloody cigarette smoke i choose not to smoke and i want to continue i don't want to be you know i don't want that that to be what's the word um impinged but it doesn't bother me if someone vapes because don't smell in it i don't have to you know i don't inhale anything well exactly so, right exactly right no. um the, the, the thing about it is what makes me laugh about all of this when you get what we refer to as the aunties, mm. banging on about medicinal regulation. If they only knew there are two devices on the stocks at the minute that are likely to get a marketing authorization, as we already know, none of the gear that you can see from where you're sitting that's on my desk yeah. would get an authorization. Jeremy Means said that, that he doesn't think they're good enough or the MHRA doesn't. The only two that are on the stocks that are likely to get an authorization are both cigar likes they both yeah. look exactly like cigarettes yeah that i must admit that does concern me a little bit that, that does concern me it, it's something that i think too many legislators and regulators are not aware if they're worried about renormalization and the bma is the very worst for this mm. if they're worried about renormalization they should be pushing the kind of gear i'm using and saying why doesn't everybody go and buy what dave dawn uses what sav uses what yeah. Everybody that's probably watching this show uses. They don't look anything like cigarettes. They, they no. look, look nothing like cigarettes, and the only ones, the only ones that are going to get a marketing authorization, look exactly like cigarettes. And I just, yeah. I can't work that out. We're going to take a short break, uh, and when we get back, Rebecca, if it's all right with you, sure. I'd, I'd like to pick your brains about how best we go about speaking to MPs and influencing sure. them to come to the light side from the dark well, side of the force. Just to inform them, because most don't really know what's going on, MPs. Right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cover that when we get back from okay. the break. Don't go anywhere. Those of you that are watching now, don't go anywhere. We will be back in a couple of minutes with Rebecca Taylor, with Andy Sutton, Sav and myself. This is going to be important. Back in two.
And we are back in the room um, and I'm here to tell you while we were off on the break Rebecca has proved she's a real proper human being if we didn't already know that because lots and lots of work for a deadline on Friday for a dissertation you have my yeah. sympathy I yeah. well well remember doing mine ye gods and little yeah. fishes murderous I was getting through I've just got I had a lot of questions about the application form now just got lots of answers back <coughs> from the tutor so I'm very pleased all good stuff. What 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 is it you're studying? Um, I'm doing a master's degree in public health, and I'm doing the dissertation on influenza vaccination of um, healthcare workers. Oh right, right. You know. And I got a jab last Wednesday. There was a flu clinic in the Parliament, and I got a jab because I got horrible, horrible flu in February this year, and I never want to repeat it. I could. We could. There are three of us here that could <laughs> say something, but we're not gonna. All I'm going to say is I've been using e cigs for close on to five years now. Haven't had a dose of flu or a cold since I started, but I'm not going to say I'm that out loud. I'm not sure that you might have just been lucky, you know. No, no. I haven't either. <laughs> Neither's Andy. No, my wife's a teacher. If it's going, or was a teacher, she's retired now. If it was going around, she brought it into the house and, yes, and everybody. And, and I haven't suffered a, not, not, a, not a day, not a minute. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Yeah. Um, MPs and influencing them um, and also the process that's currently going through. We know we're in trilogue now. Can, can you, just, just to begin with, explain to the viewers what trilogue actually means and what the potential is, what can possibly be done there? Yeah. Basically, trilogue are the meetings that happen between the Parliament and the national governments. So the parliament voted through the TPD, um, the council, as in the national governments, already have a position on the TPD since I think it was July, they came up with a common position. Um, so basically it will be negotiations to come up with a final agreement that both sides, i.e. Um, parliament and national governments agree on. The commission uh, also attends these meetings, but they don't have kind of formal input they usually give sort of technical uh, advice shall we say because um, i've sat in trilogues for a couple of other um, pieces of legislation so basically there will be a representative from each of the major political groups obviously linda mccavin as the as the rapporteur will be the lead negotiator mm -hmm. but then there will be frederick rees my belgian colleague who will be there for the liberals uh, Martin Callanan for the ECR and I think it's Carl's Heinz Florence for the EPP. Mm -hmm. uh, Martina Anderson, who is Sinn Féin for the GUI, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the Green... Schleiter. I think it's Schleiter, yes, yes. Carl Schleiter. I was trying to remember who the Green uh, yes. rapporteur was. Again, I've uh, memorised them all. So they will um, normally attend all the meetings. Obviously, sometimes one person might not be able to attend all of them. But they've got quite already a schedule of meetings set up because there is a strong desire to get this tied up by the end of the year under the Lithuanians. Because the next presidency is the Greek presidency 
and Greece being Europe's largest tobacco producer, I mean, because it's on a European scale, and not very strong on tobacco control, you know, th th there's a worry that if it passes to the Greek presidency that, yeah, it might not be such a priority there's, compared to the Lithuanians who are quite strong on tobacco control. Okay. A, a question here, because it, 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 I think you and I both agree that, that uh, Amendment 170 as it went through wasn't ideal. No, it it wasn't ideal. No, I mean it was, it was the best amendment we could get adopted. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, which, you know, because I wasn't, I thought the I wasn't comfortable with the thirty milligram limit, um, but this was to match le existing legislation in other countries, which actually is slightly lower. I believe I think France is twenty. France is twenty um, yes. milligrams per milliliter. So I sort of wasn't keen on that but this was sort of asked and it was trying to match with us so it you know it's yeah it, it's not it isn't a perfect moment it goes it, it goes very much in the right direction and the advertising yeah possibly is a little bit on the strict side but this was really necessary this was the key to getting sufficient support because one of the big concerns that was expressed by people who were kind of not convinced by the medicines route but not convinced by the alternative was the advertising and marketing restrictions because they were concerned you know I don't want these products marketed to children um, you know I don't want them marketing it marketed in a way that are sort of like the tobacco ads of yesteryear um, you know, I went to, interestingly enough, I went to Stockholm to the European Centre for Disease Control and had a sort of day and a bit being a tourist at the weekend. And I went to the a little tobacco museum and I saw some of the old ads, you know, from the 60s and 70s. Yes. And of course, you never see them now. And it was shocking to see that imagery with because you never see that now with cigarettes. Well, certainly not in a developed world anyway. No. Um so that was a big concern and we had to address it. And this concern was like, yeah, we don't, you know, there's a number of people sort of, we're not convinced uh, of the medicines route, but the advertising and marketing restrictions, yeah, we definitely want these to be strong. So mm. it, 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 it is an interesting one because mm -hmm. the growth that there's been in Europe thus far over the last four yeah. or five years has seen almost zero advertising until the last 12 months, less than 12 months. Yeah. It's, it's only been in 2013 when there's been any television advertising anywhere in Europe. Yeah. And yet the growth is such that we're now looking at around about 7 million, 7 to 8 million e-cig users throughout Europe. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of it is, is word of mouth. It is. Um, certainly people I've, because I interrogate people on trains and on the street and stuff. I know, I've watched you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've, um, you know, I've had people say that to me that, you know, they've tried an e-cigarette because a, a friend of theirs uh, switched from smoking tobacco to an e-cigarette and they've thought, oh, I might give it a try. Yes. So. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I've got to say, I'm not greatly worried about the advertising restrictions. The 30 milligram, I know, there are a lot of people uh, don't like that. I mean, I use 36 yeah. and 45 as a matter of course. I could go to 30, I'd just be sucking on it more. Um, but it, it's an arbitrary figure. I mean, what, 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 we, what would the, the reason Frederic chose 30 milligrams is because this was above the limits that were set in some countries, which I say I think are 20 in Belgium and France. Mm -hmm. But they were. it was above what most people use. So mm. the rationale was... There won't be too many products affected. Well, that's 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 true enough. That is true enough. Yeah. What? But yeah, I, I mean, originally when we um, tabled amendments to the Environment Committee report, we didn't put a limit. We just didn't put a limit at all. Mm. But again, you know, ni politics is the art of the possible. Aye, it's it's. You, know, you can have a perfect amendment, but if nobody votes for it, it's pretty useless. Uh, uh, yes, so, uh, it, it it seems to be. Uh, a little bit about horse trading is it is how it seems to come through, which which leads it's me nicely. It's the same in every parliament, to be honest. Yeah. So you know, you need to get enough support. So if people have slightly different positions, you need to come up with a 
yeah, some kind of compromise, some to meet their concerns. Otherwise, you don't get their support. I mean, that's it's politics. <laughs> yes, the, the, so. I will say that there is there's been a lot of concern voiced amongst the vaping community yeah. as as to whether Mrs. McAvan's heart is really in what the plenary, what the Parliament that's, decided. Yeah. Well. I mean, Fre Frederic Rees, my, my Belgian colleague, and um, Martin Callanan from the, the Conservatives from the ECR group, um, they will be there and they will definitely be pushing this. And I guess also Karl Heinz Florenz, because he came over in the end. Um, and it was a very clear majority. It very. was even, I think, almost two thirds, which it didn't have to be. but qualified majority, I think it, it didn't have to be, but it was almost. Yes. The thing is, like I said, the pressure is on to get a deal by the end of the year for the reasons that, that I explained. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I just don't know. What, what? Um, I mean, it's not... Martin and, and Frederic will definitely push this, without a doubt. Is it, is it possible that, um, that the trilogue could look at this and say, right, if we want the TPD through yes. with everything to do with tobacco and slims exactly. and menthol exactly. and everything else, all ingredients, blah, 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 yeah, etc. Would, yeah. would, has it ever happened? How likely is it that they would say, okay, we put everything through bar article 18 and say, we need to look at this again. It's not disappeared. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gone. We're just doing everything bar that prior yeah. to Christmas in order to get it through. Is there any mileage in, in pressing MEPs and, and UK MPs and national members of parliament all over Europe for that sort of thing to happen? Is it, yeah, or I mean, am that, I just that, grasping that's at straws? One, that's, one, that's one way. If, if an agreement can't be reached, that is one possible way forward. I don't know how um, common that is. Um, some things do get kicked out at the last minute. I mean, in general, in proposals. Um, I'm thinking I was working on something on, on transparency in extractive industries, and we wanted um, it expanded to several more sectors, more than extractive. Um, and then the council said no, so we kicked it out. But this was only part of a article, not kicking out a whole article. Right. So... I, I would I would have to ch to speak to to Chris and Frederic on that because they worked on the previous um, tobacco directive. Okay. Just to know what the possibilities are. It, it's it's an intriguing but the, thought. But the thing is that no, you know, people do not want this to hold up the tobacco directive because, as I say, for reasons I already explained, it needs to be done by the end of the year. Also, for all the you know the the final versions to be, um, you know checked and put in all the language versions etc you know that there is that there is there is that sort of that takes time yes no yes so, the, so there needs to be enough time for it to be you know tidied up done and dusted and then put into force mm. it, it it so that sounds relatively encouraging i'm looking at sav because yeah. we, we we do take a lot of questions from chat what have we got lined up sav You've actually covered most of them. Um, they were very concerned about whether Linda McEvan would be supporting Amendment 170. And of course, the other thing that our chat are bringing up a lot of is about the Facebook chat that uh, Linda had. Yeah. I, 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 oh, I think I read some. Yeah, I think I read uh, an article about this that she, I mean, she seemed to have uh, picked the questions. Is that correct? That she didn't accept. The, um, well, I, I can speak you know, as I'll, I'll speak as somebody that was there, okay. and and who did a little bit of research. I'm not going to make any accusations as such, or allegations even. What mm -hmm. I will say is what I saw, and what I saw was in excess of a hundred vapors, not just British ones, but from mm -hmm. all over the place. I saw many questions asked on Amendment 170. Was yeah. her heart in it? Uh, did she see any possibility of, a, of an option of what we've just been discussing? Sure. And all that was answered, and I'm going to use one of her phrases, were names I didn't recognise, not British. Um, and when we did some research, four of the posters of questions that were answered, and they were very soft questions um, yeah. asking about, you know, Slim's not being banned, 
menthol, taking eight years, that kind of mm. thing. Those four questions of, I think it was less than a dozen that were actually answered, came yeah. from people that work at the European Parliament. Okay. And one yeah. specifically came from a young lady who appeared to be sat at Mrs. Matavan's right hand side from the IT department helping her through the process. Now, I'm not going to say that this was actually the girl. It looked as though it might be. There's been a letter has come out to the community from the European Parliament denying that it was her. But okay. mm, I'm, I'm not wholly convinced of the veracity of the statements in that letter. That's where I'm going to leave it. I, I'm not going to put you on the spot by asking your opinion I, because I, you weren't I, there. I mean, I wasn't there, so no. I don't know anything about it. I mean, it is because sometimes you can get, you know, like slightly nutty people when you do this kind of thing. I think it is relatively common to, obviously you have to pick the questions because there are too many. And sometimes people do ask inappropriate things. Um, so I think that there is a, obviously a certain, um, you know, a correct role for an MEP to choose the questions they, they answer. But it sounds like it went a little bit further than that. But as I say, I wasn't, you know, I, you know, I, I, I didn't see it, so... Yes. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't know under what auspices it was arranged. I um, guess it was just something she did, Linda decided to do herself. I, I would think so, yes. Um, yeah. it, it was the second such event, um, really, and, and neither was particularly satisfactory for members of the community that were there. I think that's probably the easiest way to say it. However, uh, I think viewers might well be satisfied with the fact that someone who they have a lot of trust in is aware of this so they know that it's it's mm. it's out there and it's it's in the proper yeah. part of it if you like was there anything else Sav? um there was just uh, the few things that people were concerned about was um well they want clarification of where cross-border sales stand in amendment 170 uh, yes Yes, this was, we didn't know when we tabled the amendment what, what was going to happen to the article on cross-border sales. Um, so at the moment, I think, as it would stand, cross-border sales would, or member states would be able to uh, forbid cross-border sales. I think that's where it stands, but I'm off work this week and I don't have the documents with me. But that, that is my understanding. Um, because obviously when we put the amendment forward, we didn't know what was going to happen in the relevant article we didn't know which amendments were going to get voted through so yeah yeah it, it again it's a difficult one that what what um in trilogue when they're looking at that um yeah. as, as because that that article is before article 18 is it article 10 yeah. 10. I don't, as I say, I don't have the proposal in front of me. So. Um, I, I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm an idiot I should have had mine in front and I, I think yeah. It's either five or ten. It's one of the two. Either way, um, is there a, is is there a, a prospect or a chance that in trilogue they can look at that and go, hang on, actually, we didn't mean that to happen when it comes to cross border sales for e-cigs, because yeah. it, so could that be changed in trilogue? Yeah, it could. I mean, I don't know what the council position on that was. Um, I, I, to I don't be, know if the council had taken a position on that or not. I'm not. It's not in relation to not in relation to e-cigs because, of course, the um, the provisions were originally in relation to cigarettes, and it was basically to give member states the possibility to ban cross-border sales of um, cigarettes if they wanted to, but not. It's not a European-wide um, provision. Right. It's a possibility for member states. In, in, this I would I would check with um, with Frederic's office. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. So, Sav, have we got anything else from chat? The only other thing that's coming from chat is um, regarding the advertising. Is a website classed as advertising? Oh, that's well, a good question. It depends what's on the website. It depends what's on the website. I mean, obviously, if there's a website of a company advertising a product, then clearly it's advertising. Um, so, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my hand up and say this is the only bit that worries me. <laughs> um, because what we're about is e-cigs and I'm, I'm sure somebody somewhere will try and make the point that what we do is promote electronic cigarettes and their usage, which is exactly true. We do. And we also are funded 
by adverts from vendors. Um, and <laughs> let's just say we've been looking at the uh, possibility of buying a boat and going and broadcasting from the middle of the North Sea. <laughs> Like, what was it? Free Radio Caroline or whatever it was, the yeah. one in there. Yeah. yeah, the boat that vaped. The boat that vaped. That would be the boat that rocked, yes, yeah. Radio Caroline. I, mean, I think, you know, any. I mean, to, for me, I mean, I looked at the, the MHRA um, information that you gave and I passed it uh, to uh, my assistant who's a lawyer and I, I gave you her opinion, obviously, you know, some lawyers give you know you get five lawyers you can get five opinions yes um but she said that the what she was reading she did not interpret that if somebody writes something about a product on a website not connected to that particular product then that's definitely not advertising <laughs> Um, right. I think you know, I think I'm going to say we're going to keep watching this space. Yeah. And and if there's I mean, if there's going to be any lobbying about advertising, if it looks as what's going to threaten us, expect me expect me in Brussels. <laughs> I would just say the other thing in relation to um, you know the trialogue is that of course because it is national governments that are in the trialogue. I mean we know it's the public health minister Jane Ellison, the, the very new public health minister. She's just came in in the last reshuffle. Um, this is something that I found from speaking to uh, Westminster colleagues. Most are not really aware um, that this is going on. And when you sort of say, well, um, the government position is to regulate e-cigarettes of medicines, at least with most of my Liberal Democrat colleagues, they kind of go, oh, really? That, that kind of doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> um, so I, I would encourage people to, to raise this issue to their MP because the more pressure that is coming from MPs to the minister. Um, I mean, I know my colleague, Laurelie Burt, this week has been, um, I think she has asked a parliamentary question, and, and I know that um, we've been in touch with her office. We've got some questions from her office and on the tobacco, the TPD in general, um, and we, we supplied them with information. We did email all our colleagues uh, at Westminster to say this was going on, but it doesn't come, you know, it's not Westminster business um, it's not going through the Parliament, so as I say, most people are probably not very aware of it, and you know, maybe efforts to make them aware of it might might not might not be a bad idea. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna face camera now, and sorry that you'll get the back of my head. Okay. You you've heard it, you've heard it said. We need to be talking to our MPs. We need them to know what's happening. Rebecca's doing her bit from her side. Yeah. There, there's nothing much more than, uh, the, 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 that you can do than that. Than well, I mean, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing what I can. I'm sending stuff to, to colleagues in Westminster. And obviously, um, Chris and I are, you know, keeping very close contact with Frederica. And we will, we will hear back from her when she's been to Trilog. Um, but I think it, you know, I think the, the bulk of, um, I would certainly say, Conservative and Liberal Democrat MPs would not, tend to be in favour of over-regulation. Um, just in, in general, I don't think they would be. But mm. most of them don't appear to know what's um, what's going on. Because because it's not going through Westminster, I mean, it's normal, it's not going through their parliament. So it, it's something slightly, yeah, slightly outside. Um, but I think, you know, if you raise this to um, MPs, it can't hurt. You know, as I say, one of my colleagues, Laurelie Burt, um, has now, she asked a parliamentary question and she's now sort of, you know, doing a little bit of work on that. And, you know, if we get a few more people doing that, I think um, it, it could be helpful. Yes. But yes. I mean, you, I, I, I wrote something on my website about this and just kind of, you know, a little bit of suggestions of things to say. I think what's particularly important and what made me really read into this issue is the personal stories that I heard from people, not a pro forma email that's identical and comes the same email from, you know, X hundred people. But it was people writing to me, clearly doing it off their own back, not being told to do that by by anyone and giving a personal story, you yes. know, that so, that's I mean that's that's what we've more I mean, or less we've said from the beginning. I mean, to go into huge detail, just to sort of a few lines is enough. But just to show that you are a genuine, you know, you're not some astroturf 
you know, you're not some PR agency employee, but you're, you know, an individual constituent who is concerned about this issue for, for good reasons. Excellent stuff. Um, I, I'm going to ask you a question because we've got Andy, who's the director of the SWAF Smoke Without Fire campaign with us tonight. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's, he's, the, the SWAF videos are superb from our our perspective. Yeah. Can you just give us some idea of, of whether MEPs are aware of them? Have they watched them? Do they have any effect on them? Um, I haven't asked, so I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, um, the people I know who have been active on this issue probably have seen them, but I haven't actually asked that specific question. So, yeah, sorry. It's, it's okay. It was. It was just. Um, mm -hmm. I wondered whether whether you were aware whether whether they'd been talking about them. Um, Andy, we need to send them to everybody again. No, absolutely. And 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 my Skype dropped out just at the right moment, wrong moment then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, don't I, I, I picked up a little bit of the last bit, and um, yes, the, the the films are there. They're available for everybody to be um, sent out via email, and there's another big one coming soon. Um, some exciting news as well. So, can you spill any of that news? Not at the moment. Not not right now. There's the right time to do it, and uh, it's still bubbling away. But it it okay. it's it's basically. Our, our intention with this is to release it serialized first of all and then um, and then okay. put all those bits together and create a, a a long form documentary which tells both sides of the stories uh, unfortunately the people on the the other side of the argument that that um, see these as medicines and and s think that they should be heavily regulated thusly taking it away from the people that are 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 opposed to that they they are not willing to to go on record and say that unfortunately so that leads us to a certain conclusion um and the the way the documentary is is coming together is it, it seems to be a sort of if you're aware of the documentary super size me um yeah for for mcdonald's and mcdonald's yeah, after that came out had to change their menu day. um so for me, I'm, I, I interview vapors, and I, I, we've interviewed you. Uh, thank you for your time for that, and and we've interviewed very many many politicians. And the message is very clear that the way the way that you are, you know, you're going forward with this is 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 sense. Um, yeah. So so the argument is building against the the antis, um, and the the announcement that we're going to make soon is going to put the pressure more on those people to think, hold on a second, this might have a global audience and it might be potentially quite embarrassing if we're on the wrong side of the argument. What would your thoughts be about that? Would that, would that, yeah, with the I'm, presence I'm of curious. something like that? I'm very curious that you couldn't get anyone to, um, to come and speak um, um, you know, for, for the, for the opposite view, because Sure. I don't know. I, I would have thought that if the people are so so convinced, then they would want to participate. I mean, the one thing, I, the one reason thing I can think um, is that uh, because there have been some, and I know it's only a tiny minority, and I've I've said this before, who have been quite aggressive um, and sometimes a little bit rude in the way that they have addressed this issue, that it it might put those people off and say, oh, and, and you kind of tie you with the same brush, which is which is co totally unfair. It, it will. That, that I mean, we, we've tried on several occasions to get the key say, um, points across from those people, and it's yeah. always been a very polite request. And, oh, I'm uh, sure. And, oh, no, I'm absolutely sure of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and the and not, the uh, the reply back, the re the rejection has always been equally as polite. Um, okay. But you know, I can only then take what they've said in the press and interpret that. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a very interesting situation, right. but it's one yeah. we're continuing with, and we are making headway with as well in certain respects as well. Okay. Yes, I think it's it, it's summable, upable, to some degree. Oh, some nice. well, it's it's a Geordieism. Uh, okay. Tonight is brought to you by many words. Um, <laughs> we'll not use the other ones. <laughs> no, not at the moment. Not in present company. Later, maybe. Um, I, I, I think it can be summed up by saying, I think I get the feeling that the tide is turning 
in favour of electronic cigarettes as a consumer device. Well, um, I mean, the Parliament vote is 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 the is the, is the start of that. Absolutely. You know, because at the beginning, I didn't, you know, I just didn't know which way it was going to go. And I even was nervous to say to the French vapors on the Monday before the vote, was I totally sure we could get the amendment through? I said, you know, there's definitely a possibility we get it through. It's definitely possible. But I was, you know, we had all these rumors flying around, which you often do before a vote, to be honest. I mean, even on other, on other things, I've had similar rumors floating around that were absolute rubbish, by the way on another totally unrelated piece of legislation that got people worried. Mm. Um, so you just never know which of the rumours, you know, is genuine. Oh, <laughs> and which uh, has been kind of made up or just misinterpreted well, by someone. We, we rebroadcast uh, the meeting, the plenary meeting, uh, because the, the IT folks in Europe appear to be unable to broadcast to Macintosh users. Or iPad use. The, 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 it, it'll only work on Internet Explorer under Windows. Um, oh, so I didn't we realise that. I, I don't tend to web stream myself, so. Well, because you'll be in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but, uh, but I, it's true. I haven't actually. Oh, you know, I think I did once try to watch uh, because I, I had to be. Um, I couldn't attend a committee meeting or something and it, because I had something else. And I think I was trying to watch it on my iPad and I couldn't, but I didn't realise it was actually that it just simply doesn't work on, on a Mac. They but. use, they use uh, a Microsoft technology in order to be able to stream the various different languages. I understand why yeah, it is. Okay, right, yeah, that makes sense. And, and seriously, two hours with them and I can put them right so that everybody can watch it. It's not. It's not difficult to do, given yeah, I thought that. It was just me being no, no, technically no, inept with my iPad. No, we 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 restreamed it, um, so it went out as good as live from here, much as we're doing tonight, um, yeah. and just prior to it all happening, one of your colleagues tweeted, "I don't think this is gonna happen." <laughs> And people, really? yeah, the, we, we actually broke our chat software. There were too many people in watching it. We've never had such yeah. massive numbers. And to a man, everybody went, oh, no, it's not going to happen. And I, I'm here to tell you that when Amendment 170 went through, was voted for, you could hear the roar around the country from oh, the lovely. vaping community. <laughs> See, because I was too busy concentrating on my voting list, which went on and on and on for much longer because it was quite a big voting list that yeah. I, I just, yeah, obviously yeah. wouldn't have been aware of that. Yeah, well, we, we seriously, everybody was watching. Everybody was willing you on to success. Absolutely. Um, uh, can I just add something here as well? I've, I've made documentaries for, for like a long time uh, sure. and just witnessing that online, you know, it was a very, and it's a very, it will be a very emotional point in the film as well. Because, you know, you've got a community here who are united by the internet and they've got people sure. like yourself <laughs> fighting for them. And it's just such a... I've never seen anything like it. You know, a group of people who are, you know, united in one moment. It's, it, was, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was. It was absolutely that. Um, I am conscious of the fact that we have overrun by a substantial yeah. margin. Um, yeah, and, I, and, and I'm conscious <laughs> as well that you've, you've got a lot to do as well. So yeah. we, we always, always, always give the last word to chat because as I've, I've been hurt this year many times and everybody knows it's true, we do have the best live chat on the planet. The people that watch these shows are without doubt the best on the planet. Sav, over to you for the last word. The last word tonight from chat is they all say a huge, huge thank you to Rebecca for joining us and for everything that they have that you've done for the community. They are so grateful. I'll no I'll echo doing that in spades. <laughs> well, I'll echo that in spades, Rebecca. Thank you so much for taking time out of what I know is a very busy schedule to come and join us. You've got no idea how grateful. I personally am, and how obviously how grateful our viewers but look are for what you. Technology enables us to do. I can talk to you from my kitchen. You can indeed. <laughs> yeah, and and anywhere you can get Skype because apparently the uh, connectivity in the Parliament's very good. Yeah, it's not bad. The Wi-Fi is pretty good. Yeah. 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 So you, I, I think it's safe to say you'll always be welcome on the show. Okay. You just need to let me know, and we'll make space. Sure. I'll, 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 no you know. 
there you go. And um, I would encourage people as I say to, if I can have a really last word, you can. to look at the article that I wrote on my blog because I think it's, it's useful for people if they want to contact their MP. It's just a... Yes, I, I'll, let, I'll let go of that. Go and read it. Tells you what to do. Yeah. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. That's what you need to do. I, I'm, I'm going to beg of you again. Please, please, please get in touch with your MP. Get them educated. Be nice about it. They need to know because they don't know. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna just one last little plug for the knees, mate, on the 9th of November. If you're around, come on up to South Shields. I, I, I think I'm safe in saying you won't need to buy a drink or anything else. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have half guests. Oh, bring them. Newcastle. I was in Newcastle on, on Sunday and Monday, but unfortunately spent most of it at the RVI because my grandma's in there and she's not very well, unfortunately. Oh. So, well, if, if, the RVI. You, if you're going to be not very well, the RVI is the best place to be not very well. It's, it's got a, very, a hell of a yeah, reputation. Newcastle Hospitals Trust is a very, very good one. Yes, it is. It is. They're really taking very good care of my grandma. And w with that, we, we probably do have to go so you can yeah. get back to sorting out your sure. dissertation on all this Thank clever you. stuff. Um, Thank you so much for joining us again, Rebecca. You're Thank welcome. you to you as well, Andy. Um, you're welcome. You're a star. Sav, as per usual, I know your job will not have been easy tonight, <laughs> and I'm sure that the rest of the team will have been backing you up. Um, from all of us here, it's been a great pleasure and privilege to have spent the last hour and 22 minutes with you. I hope it's been useful and informative for you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join us tomorrow night for fun and frolics. Apparently, yours truly is going to be vaping on menthol whether he wants to or not. I am taking no responsibility for the consequences of that. Rebecca, don't tune Sorry. in. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be nice. It's, it's, Sorry, I'm just laughing. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, night night everyone. Yes, from all of us here, that's a good clue. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us. We'll see bye. you tomorrow. Take care. Where are my outro there it is good night see you tomorrow